time to hang out with my sister girl. Hey, sister girl on films. Hey, sister girl on films. Hey. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, sister girl on films. Listen, y'all, this is a very like uncommon <laughs> type of video for me to do on my channel. Um, every now and again, I'll do something that's a little like off brand, I guess, for Sister Girl on Films, but not too often. But I, I had to come in and, and give my two cents on this whole uh, Kiki Palmer interview with Tyler Perry as she did recently. I have a link to the full interview um, down below. Um, it'll link you to her YouTube channel. Um, I would encourage you, you know, to watch the entire interview to get full context, also just to show her support. Um, I think that Kiki Palmer, first of all, looked gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous in this interview. I said, hair is herring, face is facing. I already think she's beautiful anyway, but then you didn't put a, a beat to it and your hair is laid. Forget about it. Kiki looks amazing. And speaking of Kiki, let me just get this right on out the way. Um, people have been kind of giving her a little, little heat about her interview uh, with Tyler Perry in terms of how she kind of showed up in her interview where she was, um, you know, doing a lot of, mm hmm, okay, right, right. Well, yeah, y'all. I mean, Kiki has known Tyler Perry since she was a little girl. You know, she played in Medea's uh, family reunion with Tyler Perry. Well, yeah, with Tyler Perry and. And I'm sure they forged a relationship over the years. And so basically like she's his friend. I'm sure she's within his, one of the people within his circle. So obviously she's gonna give him um, a pleasant experience on her podcast. You know, he's a guest on her podcast. She's interviewing someone that she considers, if not a friend, at least it, it sounds like a mentor and somebody she looks up to. So if a friend of mine or someone I have a close working relationship with invites me to their podcast and then they blindside me with questions and attitude and stuff. I'm going to cuss you out on your podcast and then I'm going to call you and hit you with it. And another thing, bitch. So I get it. <laughs> Kiki showed up the way I expected Kiki to show up. So I'm not mad at her. I feel like she did a really good job and I'm actually curious to see more interviews on her podcast because I, I just I like her energy and I am a fan of Kiki Palmer so I just want to get that out the way so this is not a critique of Kiki Palmer's interviewing style or anything like that because she did with anybody that's interviewing a friend or a close person to them would honestly do let's be honest but what I do want to address um and I'll put like a small little snippet clips of the things that Tyler said just so that um, y'all don't feel like he ain't say that, you know, cause I'm going to come with the receipts, babes. Okay. Do I need to bring the receipts? Do I need to bring the receipts? Oh, no. But what I do want to be able to do is kind of have a little conversation about some of the things that Tyler Perry said within that interview. There's only a couple of things that I want to hit on. Um, and yes, this is definitely a moment of a hit dog will holla because he called people who critique his films and talk about the type of films that he make highbrow Negroes. We're talking a large, a large portion of my fans who are disenfranchised, who, who, who cannot right. get in the Volvo and go to therapy on the weekend. That's so right. you've got this highbrow Negro who is all up in the air with his nose up looking at everything. And then you've got people like where I come from and me who, who are grinders, who really know what it's like, whose mothers and who were caregivers for white kids and were maids and right. housekeepers and all of these beauticians that don't don't discount these people and say that their story don't matter who, do you, who are you to be able to say which black story is important or should be told and so because i give criticism and critique and have done so on the last three films that he's done baby he wrote that pe that paper up and hit me upside my head so yes this hit dog is hollering today holler okay shout out to medea but listen <laughs> Let me touch on that just for a hot second. The notion, the notion of someone that is on the precipice, if you will, of being a billionaire, having the audacity to call anyone highbrow, just within context, is kind of crazy to me. Um, sir, you are a black, I'm just gonna call him a billionaire, even though he's not quite there, but he's close enough. So you're a black billionaire in black Hollywood that has participated in the black balling of a black actress. So I don't know what highbrow means to you, but that within itself is a great example of what a highbrow Negro would do. Bars. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> I 
can't get past the fact that he tried to put the criticisms of his movie into this box of people critiquing only the content. Now, are there people that like go hard on him and it's like Tyler Perry only make the same type of movie? Yes, yes. And maybe that's who he specifically was talking about. I don't feel that way, but maybe that's who he was specifically talking about. And I personally don't feel like that's a fair critique of Tyler Perry in terms of making the same type of movie over and over again, because y'all wouldn't have that same type of smoke for Wes Craven. Y'all don't have that smoke for Wes Craven. And shout out to Wes Craven, rest in peace, okay? He's an OG, he was an OG. He was the best of the best, okay? So no, I'm not putting Tyler Perry and Wes Craven in the same category, okay? I'm being clear about that. But my point is that Wes Craven knew what his strength was in terms of writing the type of movie he wants to be in the horror genre. I don't remember Wes Craven producing a musical. I don't remember that. I don't, and it might, might be a thing. It could be out there, you know, I'm not saying I know all of Wes Craven's catalog, but to my knowledge, his genre, his niche genre was horror films and anything under the horror umbrella. So I wouldn't say that if, if Wes Craven was still alive today and continued to make horror films, like, dang, Wes just keep making the same movie over and over again. I wouldn't, I would say, ooh, Wes Craven got another horror film. I know it's gonna be a banger, let me go watch it. That would be my response. And so I don't feel like it's a fair critique to Tyler Perry to say, he just keep making the same movie over. Well, y'all don't have that smoke for all these other people who continue to make drug crime dramas in the black community all the time. Like the things that Tyler Perry is writing about ain't nothing new. It's his, he ain't doing nothing revolutionary. Tyler Perry is writing the same shit that has been in cinema in Hollywood that targets the black community for decades. Matter of fact, this is the 2000s, centuries at this point. So he ain't the one that started it off. He didn't jump this off. This has been a, a niche genre for a very long time, black struggle. The only thing Tyler Perry has done differently is that he has not put in a white savior. So let's just, <laughs> let's be clear about that. So I just wanna clear that up. Now where a lot of people do give critiques is about the execution of said content. You can give us all the, the sad struggle love, uh, blue collar man come in to save the broken woman or the bitch or whatever. You can give all, you can give us that a thousand times over and over again, but it's the continued execution of said movie over decades. It's ridiculous at this point. And to not have any type of progression in the quality of your filmmaking, that's the critique. That's the issue, at least that I've seen. Again, yes, there are people who have con who have critiques about the content. I don't agree with those people, so I'm not I'm not speaking on their behalf. I'm speaking for those of us who have an issue with the execution, the execution, and the lack of self awareness that maybe I'm not that great at this part of the filmmaking process. Yes, you are great at making money. Yes, you're great at marketing. Yes, you're great at getting those deals. Yes, you're great with figuring out how to, to di diversify your brand and all that. Amazing at that. And ain't nobody taking that away from you. But where you struggle is in the creative part of that. Period. I don't care. Like, that's what it is. And to continue to kind of put this cape on of, I grew up, I was homeless, I grew up in poverty, da 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 da. So I'm speaking to these people. I mean, I guess, but also you're only giving only a certain amount of <laughs> opportunity to people. You sat up here in this interview and said, I've been teaching young directors. I've trained enough young directors to be able to understand how to edit and shoot. So they're able to do a huge page count like I can. It's one thing to have young, to have up and coming directors that are green, you know, behind the ears and have no experience. And so you have to show them the technical side of it. I get that. That's cool. But if you're, and, and he didn't say this, but this is kind of what it felt like. But if you're essentially just making a bunch of mini use, because I, I'm, I think these like writers and directors 
are um, on, they do episodes of his shows, but the episodes of his shows are just like his fucking movies. So what, so, so what are we boasting about at this point? We have some amazing writers, directors, filmmakers on YouTube. There are short filmmakers on YouTube that are killing it. I am amazed that I, when I see the amount of work and effort story writing that they put into these films that are less than 30 minutes. And you mean to tell me that you can't recruit from these people that have a portfolio of work, tried and true work? No, you don't want to do that because you want to get people who have aspiration to become directors. They never did it before. So you can just create a bunch of armies, a little mini use to create the projects that you want. And I just, I, it, it blows my mind. And this, this idea that, well, Tyler Perry is helping up and coming people get on the, at what cost? I said that in my marriage in the black recap, you know, Megan Good said this is the highest she's ever been paid. So my next question is, well, what doors is this project open for you? Like, yeah, he's going to pay you a good bag, but like now what? Is this going to lead to, to bigger roles? Cause we ain't seen the proof of that yet. That has not been the, the case with any of the actors in his movies. I would, I think we maybe the exception of Tess, Tessa Thompson, but also she is her like she she re removed herself from that and she got attached to marvel and all these different projects so that i don't the only reason i knew she was even in a tyler perry production is because they mentioned it in this goddamn interview i don't even know this didn't know she had a connection to anything tyler perry so that's my point like y'all can get on here and stand for tyler perry and talk about how he done done this he done done that but y'all not looking at the bigger picture there are so many talented ass, black ass writers, producers, directors in motherfucking Atlanta. And it lands her where he's at. The, the way he could impact the trajectory of so many people's careers by stepping the fuck back, having awareness to say, this ain't, this ain't where I'm strong at, but I'm strong on the back end. I'm strong when it comes to making them deals. And, and the fact that he could create a whole a company or studio with the likes of MGM, with having black content under that umbrella that he's putting money in and that he's using his business savvy to grow, it far more outweighs than you giving somebody a role in a movie that people have rated a zero. Cause that don't help her career. Megan Good being attached to a film that has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Tell me in the comments below how that helps her career. I'm not even trying to be facetious. This is not a, uh, this is not a trick question. Y'all let me know. Cause maybe, maybe it does help. But to me, being attached to a project like this and with Kelly Rowland and Mia Copa and all, like if they didn't have star power behind them already, this wouldn't help them. So him calling people highbrow for critiquing his level of work and trying to make it seem like we're saying that people, certain black stories don't deserve to be told. It's just a bold faced ass fucking lie. It ain't nobody saying that to him because those are the type of stories that have been supported overwhelmingly and annoyingly for me, at least in the black community. I have been screaming as have so many other black fans of some for something else. This is why we loved Lovecraft country. This is why we love Jordan Peele because we've been wanting to see something else. So that lets us know Tyler, you ain't doing nothing new brother. You're just not. So ain't nobody critiquing that. Don't I care about that? Like we're, we're just sick of it because we see it all the time and we're asking for something new, but it ain't just from you. It's across the board, but that blew my mind. And then the last thing I want to hit on is him saying that people, if they're just not intelligent enough to understand the nuance in the films, Nico, what? Talk about it. And I think that anybody who is intellectual can watch it and go, oh, I see what he's doing here. It's not just this big, broad, ridiculous comedy. There's some things that need to be addressed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I beggeth thine pardon. What do you mean? People aren't intelligent enough. Sir, you ain't no nuance. 
We're we're seeing that that is that when he said that y'all and like I said I'm gonna put clips in here because y'all know he didn't say that the clip is there I might not have said it verbatim but I definitely understood the meaning of the statement that blew my mind and the level of arrogance for that to fall out your mouth is that we don't understand we we get we we understand black trauma we understand that we understand all of that. And to think that we are not intelligent enough to understand a Tyler Perry script? Baby, y'all can have it. <laughs> y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. Like, I don't know what the end goal was with this interview. I don't know if it was supposed to give clarity. I feel like it was just an opportunity for him to let us have it, honey. And, 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 and to, to clear his name in a sense, but it just turned me off to him even more. And I'm just like, you are exactly who I thought you were. And I, I hate that I felt that way because there was a part of me that wanted to believe that maybe he's not as bad as people are saying. But so far, Monique has not been wrong. But yeah, so I just, I just really had to just clear that up because Tyler Perry can say all day that he listens to his fans and he's some of his core fans and how they would send him emails and give him critique and he would take notes, but you're not fucking listening. Admittedly, like the hair in Divorced in Black was so much better. It wasn't even a thought to my, until somebody in the comments pointed it out to me. I didn't even think about like the hair was okay. I didn't even pay attention to it. So yes, that's great. But what else? Like, <laughs> that's not the only feedback you're getting. And just recruiting people who are actors on your shows, because I know those are the people that he's talking about, who he's giving opportunities to and directing, because some of those people have posted it on their social media. So you're just using the people who are already within the Tyler Perry universe. And I guess that's still helping them. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to negate that and I'm not going to invalidate their success and what they're learning because this does give them great exposure to what it looks like to direct things and they can branch off and create their own projects. And I'm not saying nothing about that. You know, shout out to them for that. But what about the people who are just, who again, already have a portfolio and are trying so hard to have eyes on their project and they can't and not that tyler perry has to be the savior of all things but nigga if you're gonna try to act like you the savior of all things we just gonna expect a little bit more from you that's all i'm saying that's it and that's all now i don't got nothing else to say about this interview um like i said it's linked down below um you know so you guys want to check it out i put in the two clips for the the exact moments that I'm giving, you know, my feedback on. Um, again, just in case like the Tyler Perry stands come in the comments, like he didn't say that, he, 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 he. argue with your mama, argue with Medea, don't argue with me, okay? <laughs> but y'all let me know y'all thoughts about this interview. Um, again, Tyler Perry made some decently good points, but then it, it, it just, it just didn't sit right with me, but y'all let me know y'all thoughts. You know, do you feel like he was right? Do you feel like the criticism he gets is unfair? Do we need to give him more grace or has he fallen from grace? Child, listen, bars. <laughs> Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below. I can't guarantee y'all will ever get another video like this again because I don't like to, I don't like for y'all to see me like this. I like for y'all to see me in front of these movies, kicking, laughing, and talk, talking over them. <laughs> but sometimes I got to speak my mind about stuff. So y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comments below. And as always, y'all like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'm going to see y'all next time for I don't know what, but it's going to be something else, not Tyler Perry related. Hey, look, I talk my shit and keep it honest, keep it independent. I hear them hating, but that's only cause they inconsistent.